present our next award, we welcome the Chief Academic Officer, uh, Chief Academic and Operating Officer of the largest college on campus, the heart of a great university, the College of Letters and Science. Before taking over as dean six years ago, he was a professor of sociology, associate vice chancellor, interim provost, and director of the American Indian Studies program, all here at the University of Wisconsin. Today he leads a college of 21,000 students, 3,000 faculty and staff, and 170,000 living alumni all around the world. Please join me in welcoming Dean Gary Sandifer. Thank you, Pete. Our next honorees have amazing stories to share from our nation's capital. They are also proud life members of the Wisconsin Alumni Association. Kay Oberly's success in law has led her to her position today as an associate judge on the District of Columbia Court of Appeals. Haynes Johnson is a Pulitzer Prize winning journalist and one of America's leading voices on current politics. Their careers have taken them from our great campus to some of the nation's most hallowed halls, and their contributions are certainly part of our country's history. Let's learn more about Kay Oberly and Haynes Johnson. Haynes Johnson and Catherine Oberly met thanks to a friendly stranger on a transatlantic flight. Haynes is a Pulitzer Prize-winning journalist and author of more than a dozen books. Catherine is an associate judge on the District of Columbia Court of Appeals. And these resumes of achievement place them in Washington's elite circles. A native of New York, Haynes seemed to be born to a career in letters. His father was investigative journalist Malcolm Johnson, who won the Pulitzer Prize in 1949 for his series of articles in the New York Sun titled Crime on the Waterfront, detailing corruption in New York City's dockyards. Haynes studied journalism at the University of Missouri before joining the Army as an artillery officer in the Korean War. After the war, he followed the advice of a former professor and enrolled at the University of Wisconsin. Haynes focused his master's studies on 20th century America and relations with the Soviet Union. After he graduated, he became a reporter first in Wilmington, Delaware, and then in Washington, D.C., where he wrote for the Washington Star and later the Washington Post. While at the Star, Haynes covered the civil rights movement, often traveling to Selma, Alabama. My parents came from the South, so I had a pretty good feel for what Southerners thought and felt. No one could con me. His coverage of the civil rights movement in Selma earned him the 1966 Pulitzer Prize for national reporting. His work for the Star opened doors, but with his interest in American history, Haynes saw how daily news issues added up to a larger picture of the nation's development. What began as newspaper articles eventually turned into books. His first, Dusk at the Mountain, covered the civil rights movement. His second, The Bay of Pigs, offered a definitive account of that failed invasion of Cuba. It was a fascinating story to tell. I took a leave from the star, moved to Miami, and interviewed the leading figures. I developed a close friendship with Bobby Kennedy. In the years since, Haynes has continued writing about national politics. His books include Lyndon, about former President Lyndon Johnson, Sleepwalking Through History, a look at American culture during the 1980s, and The Best of Times, covering America during the Clinton presidency. If Haynes was born to journalism, Catherine was born to the law. A third-generation female lawyer, she was raised in the Chicago suburb of Park Ridge, Illinois, where her childhood acquaintances included Hillary Rodham Clinton. When Catherine was 10, her mother died of leukemia. She had always wished for Catherine to attend college at one of the all-women affiliates of the Ivy League. So after high school, Catherine enrolled at Vassar. She spent two years there, but in 1969, Catherine transferred to the University of Wisconsin, her father's alma mater. She made quick work of her education and applied to law school where her teachers included UW labor law professor Nathan Feinzinger and an adjunct tax law instructor named Shirley Abrahamson. These teachers broadened Catherine's mind about the variety of experience that the law could offer. When she graduated, she found her niche in appellate courts. Appellate law is not only more intellectual, but in some ways has a greater influence on people's lives. 
You address all sorts of laws and statutes. I like that combination of research and thinking about the pieces of the legal puzzle and how they will operate in practice. After earning her law degree, Catherine spent a year clerking for Judge Donald Lay on the U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals for the Eighth Circuit. She soon took a job as a litigator with the Department of Justice, where she became the youngest woman to argue a case before the U.S. Supreme Court. Her first case on behalf of the government was tough, and as many expected, she didn't win. But over the next seven years, Catherine argued 13 more cases at the Supreme Court, and she won them all. In 1986, Catherine left the Department of Justice to go into private practice, first at the firm of Mayor Brown and Platt, and five years later as general counsel for the accounting firm of Ernst & Young. She led all of the firm's litigation and advised about legislative, regulatory, and public policy issues. Over the years, she rose to the position of vice chair and was a member of the firm's executive board. In 1997, Haynes and Catherine had their first meeting. While returning home from a speaking engagement in London, Haynes struck up a conversation with an attorney on his flight. The new acquaintance invited Haynes to a dinner party where Catherine was also to be a guest. The dinner host then called Catherine and asked her not to bring a date. It was clear when I got there that all the other guests were married. She intended to get me together with Haynes, although I'd never met him. The result of that dinner party was a happy union, not just of two people, but of two influential badgers. Today, Haynes continues success as an author with his latest book, The Battle for America 2008, a study of the last presidential election. He's also a frequent commentator on PBS's NewsHour. Whether doing journalism or writing history, the goal is to tell a story. You've got to make it come alive. You've got to ask yourself, why do this? Who cares? If you can answer those questions, you'll succeed. When she's not in the courtroom, Catherine enjoys traveling with her son, and they visited destinations around the world. She also gives back to her alma mater by serving on the University of Wisconsin Foundation Board of Directors. In January 2009, President George W. Bush appointed Catherine to the District of Columbia Court of Appeals. Her first duty was to swear in her childhood acquaintance, Hillary Clinton, as Secretary of State. She was just returning from a trip to Antarctica when she learned about Clinton's request. I hadn't yet been sworn in myself. I had to contact the chief judge and get him to swear me in just before all of Washington locked down for the president's inauguration. Catherine has enjoyed the full range of judicial work during her first year on the bench. The one common thread is that every case involves thinking on a high level about legal issues, knowing that the decisions you reach matter to real people. And every day in court is a good day for the judge. And so it is that in the nation's capital, two distinguished alumni draw on their University of Wisconsin education as they stand at the heart of events. Haynes Johnson describes the sweep of history, while Catherine Oberly lays down the law. <laughs>